those false flags. Yes, they commit those false flags, the government, and they will blame some other country or a terrorist group in another country for it. That's the only way to temporarily get people in line together and to recognize that we are all humans in this community, we need each other. Okay? I'm going to give a few examples of, you know, false flags. So you have small false flags and you have enormous false flags. Okay? So I'm going to write this out now. Alright, I will not, will not fight everything, wrap everything out. I'm going to work here. So this needs to go here. And um, I'm going to wait. This is Scotland. England. Well, that comes to, to throw out the whole British ISIL. It's just something I need to explain. You know, I believe you had the Hadrian Wall here and the Anthony Wall there. Anyway, let me explain it. The Caledonians were about a half million people. The people, you know, in Roman Britain were about three and a half million. All right. So let me see so you guys can clearly see it. So um, you have. Let me draw wheels to be sure. You have here. You have about four million people. No, let me say three and a half million people, I'm sorry. And the other half a million are living in, this, in what they call Caledonia, which they would call Scotland. Okay? So, you have three and a half million people here below. You had a Roman legion here, a legion there, a legion here also. You also had a marine installation here. Each post had about 10,000 in them, so you had 10,000 here to protect, to, pro, to guard this area, 10,000 to protect here, 10,000 to protect around here, and 10,000 to protect all this whole northern area. And Londinium, or today we call it London, it was, didn't have any legion because you had all those other Roman, Roman soldier stations, military stations around, you had about four. So. Besides those military people, which together form about 40,000 soldiers, you also had about, you also had government officials, those are not, are another 25,000 who cooperate with, you know, the legion. So you had about 65,000 people around here that were guarding this whole place. And most of the people lived in small cities and they seldom left those cities. Most cities also had walls around them. So those Caledonians, they had their own cities and their own military here. Where they, they, they were not Rome. There were no Roman, you know, how do I say Roman soldiers over, over there, but they had their own soldiers. So those half million people could impossibly, you know, threaten these three and a half million people here because they had so many military stations around here. And besides that, Roman Britain was a part of the Roman Empire, so here in in Gallia, around here in Gallia, or what do they call France, also had military stations, also in what do they call the Netherlands, that time it was called Frisia and Batavia, also had military stations a lot. So this piece of country here, that they would call Scotland, this piece of country could impossibly be a threat for, for this country below. Yet, during the second century, you had two Roman emperors, one was Hadrianus and other was Antonius, Pius, you see, 
they followed each other shortly, you, you know? And beneath those two Roman emperors in their lifetime that they were the emperors of Rome, the Roman Empire was basically collapsing already. You, you see, economically things were going wrong. You had, you know, social movements that wanted to get rid of the Roman rule it's because you had client kingdoms within Rome and those client kingdoms wanted to become independent. So, and even though within those client kingdoms you had struggles of who would become the king. So things were getting wrong. And especially around here in Roman Britain. So what did both emperors do? They hired, you know, gang members from from within Italy or and some from within from the native peoples here. And those gang members they they committed attacks upon villages and cities in Roman Britain. See? And of course when that when those attacks happened in the north the people around there heard the news. The government itself spread the news around, so the people became frightened. All right? So when they became frightened, all those red tensions, you know, turned towards the Caledonians. The Caledonians were perceived as the enemy. The I don't know. They were, let me say, they were the enemy. So the blue tensions within the families also disappeared. So now you have the Roman Britain the population against the pigs. All right. And now, in order to further the bonds between the tribes in Roman Britain, you see both Hadrian and Antonius, or and both emperors decided to build walls. One had built a wall around here and the other one built a wall around here. You see, that wall cost a lot of money to, to build. You see, and that there were a lot of slaves and your employers needed from Roman Britain and also from elsewhere to build that wall. And one of those emperors even visited Roman Britain. And it wasn't usual for emperors to fit, visit distant, pro, distant provinces of the empire. So not only did the Roman Britain population generate a kind of a collective bond, now the, they also saw the emperor, had a chance to see the emperor in life. Because they didn't have television and all those media in that time. The only way you could see who the king of Italy was, because the Roman emperor was the king of Italy, and emperor of the whole area that they call the Roman Empire. You see, the Roman Britain population had a good chance to go to London and see their own king and the client rulers around. But to see the emperor who was the king of Italy only had statues that artists brought from Italy to there. So now there was, there was a climatic uh, crisis. There were false flags committed by the Roman governments in Britain and now the population began to see the Caledonians as a threat. Now they generated a bond and now they also see the emperor. So now they also feel connected to the Roman Empire. Now they feel, oh, that king of Italy, the Roman emperor, he really cares about us. He even decides to leave politics behind, come all the way here for us. So it's a way of not only, you know, relieving the community from temporarily, you know, notice it's not only a way to temporarily relieve the community of the tensions that's destroying the community was also used as a political agenda to unite the Roman Empire. Okay? So they built two walls. And um, there, this area here became a buffer zone between the Kingdom Britannia, also Roman Britain and Caledonia that kingdom. So this buffer state was called Valentia. Valentia. It was a kingdom that was established to be a buffer zone. Why did the, the Romans and the Caledonians create this buffer zone? Clearly to give the Roman population here the idea that you know they're taken care of and also to 
you know, gave the Caledonians uh, the idea that they are not being threatened by the Roman Empire because the same mimetic crisis and um, community decay that was going on here was also going on in the north. So both the king, both the rulers of Caledonia and the rulers of Roman Britain together with the rulers of Rome, they both had false flags on each other. There, as a result, they've built those walls, created this buffer zone just to keep both populations stable. Okay, so that's the nature of false flags, people. I'm going to wipe this out now. I hope I've explained here what false flags really are and why they are being committed. You see? And this was in ancient times. It's the most famous false flag of ancient times, besides the fire in Rome that destroyed 20% of the population under Emperor Nero that killed about 200,000 people and also some communities of foreigners living there. See, those two walls in England are the two, are, are the two most famous false flags in history. Now, let me say that those walls aren't the false flags, but the walls are a part of the false flags that were going on. And now you ask me, are there more than forms of false flags? Well, 9-11 is one, obviously. You can go to the, you also have something like the Oklahoma bombing, Oklahoma bombing in the USA. You also had, you know, the murder on Pim Fortuyn in the Netherlands. You also had the Pearl Harbor bombing, and you and uh, you also had not Nazi Germany. They were famous for false flags. You see, you have so many false flags, and the reason you have false flags is because unsaved people do not want to repent. They do not want to accept God's rulership over their lives. So they follow idols. Okay, and let's say this is an idol. To betray that idol, you have some sort of, I'm, I'm calling this sacred Space. Okay, this is the idol of this sacred space here, and then around it you have violence or revenge that was exercised by gang members, the police, the army schools and you have religion okay so let me go closer this here is how every society without God looks like um, you have the idol that they are worshipping between the idol and the, and the population, or let me say the community, okay. So between the community and the idol, they, they make this sacred space. Oh, you can't come too close. This is very important. The idol is where the community searches for stability. Security, safety, or protection, fulfillment, and social cohesion. Alright, so they search for all of these collective needs within the idol. 
And because they consider the idol so important for their survival, they make it sacred by the main creating space around it. And it protects the idol and the space with revenge or satanic violence and the gang members, police, religion, schools, the army, all of those actors within a community are there to protect the idol. See, and then you have members in a community that have access to this place and we call them priests. That's re religious. Then you have what we call um, the elders or in some countries you basically call them the royal family. That's the political part and the cultural part are celebrities. Okay, so let's give an overview. You have an idol. In a, you have an idol. The idol is where the community searches for security, stability, safety, or protection, fulfillment, and social cohesion. You see, because they don't want the rulership of God, now they have to create their false gods to hold on to. So, because they've made something on God, now they have to protect the illusion, because this is an illusion, or what we call a fantasy. An mental, emotional image. All right. So to protect this idol, because it's the it's the belief, or let me say the main belief in th this idol that makes the community feel safe. So now they have to protect the idol. So they make a space between the idol and the population, so you can't come to clubs. That's a sacred space that causes people to view those idols as high. You see, and um, they put revenge around it in form of going to prison or being expelled or capital punishment, the death penalty. And a few people that can have access to that idol, and those are the people that know that it's just fake and understand how this whole system works. Those are the priests the religious uh, dimension, on the political dimension you have the elders or the royal family and then you have the cultural part, those are the celebrities those are the ones that the celebrities are distracting the population from viewing the truth so all of this works together okay so false flags are designed to reinforce the idol to, so that people will not get crazy and start killing each other, all right? Because mankind without Christ, they have no peace. So they are, because they don't want Christ, they have a superficial peace. And that's why the only thing they have is, is idolatry. And the priests, the elders, or the royal family and celebrities, all of them work together to maintain this illusion. And that's why those people, celebrities, the royal family, or the elders and the priests, you know, elders can also be politicians in some countries, they're all seen as high. You need to, you, you cannot just speak to, a, to the king like that, you can't speak to a politician like that, or that's the boss, you have to so show some respect, you see. To protect the idol, there are norm, norms and values, or what we call law. So law is to protect the idol. Law is not there to protect the community. It's there to protect the idol. So if you want false facts to stop from happening, then the communities in the world need to repent, need to accept the good rulership of Christ, they need to submit to his ways so that God's will will be done on earth. As long as that's not happening, you will continue to see false flags because you name communities and both in communities and individuals outside of Christ, they have no peace. They only have superficial peace. That's why they are projecting their inner conflicts on others so that they can feel temporarily relieved. That's it.
May the grace of Jesus Christ be with you.